Microphysiologic systems are uh, small miniaturized uh, devices that are designed to uh, replicate organ level function. So they just represent a functional subunit of an organ. And I think the thing that's so exciting about these small devices is that you can actually have human tissue, human model systems rather than mice or tumor cells in a dish. If we look at the microenvironment of an organ, it's quite complex. Uh, there are certain uh, gases and gas gradients. There are chemical gradients. There are all sorts of architectural features that are really important to replicate. So I, if one just puts cells together, then I think uh, you'll have cells together, but you won't have a functioning organ, organ subunit. So what you really have to do is um, rebuild the biomaterials that they interact with, uh, shape these biomaterials so you have a scaffolding. So you really need these micro-engineered devices to be able to accurately replicate all of these features all on the small scale. So microfabricated technology relies on uh, borrowing uh, the strategies and tools and methods that were, say, used to build your iPhone. But then instead of doing copper and um, transistors and all these other things, you actually build these fluidic lines or these shaped structures, all with similar features. And one reason is, if you think of a typical cell, it's about 10 microns in diameter. So very, very small, much smaller than the diameter of a human hair. So you want to be, have to build features that are appropriate for a 10 micron sized object. Currently, right now, if you look at drug development, uh, pharmaceutical companies will often screen their drugs on tumor cells in a dish. Well, a tumor cell, I'm not a giant tumor cell and neither you, so it's not surprising that the tumor cells don't really uh, replicate normal human behavior. Next, they go to mice. Well, I'm not a 70 kilogram mouse, so it's not surprisingly that um, many drugs that work really well for mice fail when they get to humans, and there's probably a lot of drugs that would work well for humans but are quite toxic for mice. So you have bad drugs getting through the pipeline, good drugs failing, and then you get to humans and you've got this strange, not maybe necessarily the best pipeline for drugs. About um, only maybe one in 20 drugs make it through to the very end. And then the cost of doing human studies is stunningly expensive. And it's because we can't read out, weed out bad drugs more effectively earlier on in the pipeline. So what we can, so the belief is that these human model systems will enable us to replicate uh, human physiology much more closely so you can get a higher value, high, higher value information early on. You can make the bad drugs fail faster and the good drugs will still get through. So that instead of having one in 20 drugs survive human clinical trials, once you get to the human clinical trials, you'll have a much higher hit rate, which would bring down the cost. So I love PitCon, because it's, it's the if you're developing technologies and assays, this is the place to be. You get to see all the new analytical technologies as they emerge, and you can see a, ba a vast field. You can see electrochemistry, you can see mass spec, you can see microfluidics. Um, so my whole lab works on building measurement technologies and then applying them to, for different applications. So I see PitCon as the place to be if you're building measurement technologies. You will see the latest and the greatest at PitCon and then a huge diversity of measurement technologies. And I don't really think uh, there's a meeting that can compare uh, to the value at PitCon if you're really interested in building uh, platforms and novel technologies.